This is Water Elemental. And this is Axis, and we are here today to talk about the League of Legends. Got a couple of cool things to talk about this week. Uh, some very interesting and enlightening news regarding a potential new champion. A small update on Quinn. Carver remake, and a couple of interesting bits of information regarding a hotfix that was rolled out this week. But let's jump right into it. If you guys are looking for our review of Quinn, we actually did a supplementary podcast, which we'll put a link for somewhere around here. and You can find it, take a look, and uh, go look at our thoughts on Quinn. Very interesting champion. She's developing along kind of a low win rate right now, uh, but that's not entirely surprising with what we've seen. Uh, Karma uh, got leaked. The rework for Karma got leaked, and so Riot has published all our information regarding this new look for her, as well as some details about what we're going to see when she's released in full. Uh, she's going to have an additional skin available, which is going to be her traditional garb, but uh, her new outfit's going to be very interesting. Um, they sexified her. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, we have to have the sexy leg out here, and done. <laughs> But uh, they're talking about reestablishing her lore and her kit, so she's going to have a new kit to complement her new look, and they're going to change the role she plays in Ionian society. And there's been some hints that a leadership position, as well as that whole balance in all things, weighing heavily on top of her. Hey, remember when uh, Karma didn't have any lore? Uh, yeah. And hey, let's just make her leader of Ionia. <laughs> I mean, we got Swain, we got J4, we got... Uh, yeah, but this character, like, just all of a sudden becomes into power and just... It's ha, Terra Lee! <laughs> well, what, what do you think of her visuals? Uh, it's interesting. She definitely feels Ionian, which is a good start for She her. has color in her. She's not just, like, in black and white checker pattern. That's what you can get the black and white pattern if you want. Yeah, and it, everybody who owns Karma will get that skin for free. I don't know if that's going to be a skin you can buy at a later time, or if this is just going to be for those who spent money on a champion that does absolutely nothing. <laughs> so, who knows? They're, they're talking about putting it in the Legacy Vault after two weeks after the, the uh, visual remake is released. So, if you don't own her now and you want to get her when the release comes out, you can do it then. So it's up to you, really, to decide what you want to do as far as karma goes. I have to say that now we actually have information about it and have actually seen what they've been working on. I'm kind of excited to see what they want to do with it. But in the past, I'm like, yeah, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's like, you haven't given us anything. <laughs> but uh, thanks to a leak on, I believe it was the Korean website, some people on the forums managed to pull it out, and here we are. But uh, guys, there's a big, 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 big long post about it. And they're going to be releasing more information as the days go on. So go ahead and check it out on the general forums or at surrender at 20.net. Very helpful stuff. Very cool. Uh, another big thing that was released... Like uh, a couple minutes before we started recording, so lucky us. Is mention of a character currently known as Zon, a Morpheus combatant, or Zack. Zack is a character that we saw briefly, long, long, long ago. Where exactly? This was actually mentioned slightly in the Mac debut. Well, even before that, where did we see it? Oh, yes. Everybody was wondering about uh, Grumpy Monkey's icon. This is also the same image in the... Battle Bunny Ribbon. Battle Bunny Ribbon. It's that weird, like, slime-looking ghost thing with a weird antenna, like an anglerfish. Everybody was kind of speculating if this was just something weird in the background or if this had anything to do with it. Because Bunny Riven's skin is actually a lore skin, weirdly enough, that we we're that everybody was kind of captivated by it. So now we actually have a little bit more information about him. Uh, just like they did with Quinn, they put out some interesting files. In this case, instead of being a diary for Zack, as he's going to be uh, codenamed, it's a bunch of test subject reports. So I'm wondering if... This is an experiment made by Singed. Possible. Zinged and Warwick, probably. Well, Warwick kind of gave up the whole scientific business. He's now just sort of a crazy person. But uh, based on what the notes say, he's able to modify his shape. And based on what we saw in the Mac preview, it appears he can take on many shapes. And some of them set off Caitlyn traps. <laughs> Because that, didn't that bug the crap out of you, too? A little bit, yeah. Like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm going through, I'm like, okay, I get this. Who has slime? I'm like, is it Singed? No. Five seconds later, there's like a thing for Singed. So they kind of they kind of got me good on that one, and I'm, I'm impressed. Indeed. Very good uh, 
Very good way to relay this new and interesting champion. So, we haven't done this in a while, but let's uh, let's do some speculation. Speculation. All right, if I had to guess, um, it looks like he changes between many different shapes. Now, this could mean anything from it changes if he's from a range to a melee, or it could be that it changes the way his ratios work fundamentally and the, the distance of his attacks and if they're skill shots or not. Perhaps in one of his forms he can... Um, get more damage from his attack damage and have maybe a little bit shorter range and in another form he can get a lot of damage from his ability power and maybe have a little bit of a longer range and have more spell like or AOE abilities kind of like Morphling from Dota well not quite Morphling all he did was change how much strength and uh, uh, AP or not AP agility he had which changed his other abilities in that it made them you know make it so he either did more damage or had a stun effect to it so it was more a thing that changed your statistics, because statistics were a lot different in uh, Dota. In Dota, so in this game, uh, unless you know one form is super tank form, when he trades all his AD into HP, which would be cool. Well, we have three images. We have the one where he's just like a blob. The second one has him with legs, and the third one has him with arms. I don't know if this is just like his basic evolution process to where he is now, or if this is the form that he can change into. It's hard to say. But I'm thinking the bottom one, the silhouette one, that's like his current form. And he might be able to kind of... Kind of like how Kha'Zix evolves. You know, they give him... You, when you level up his ultimate, you'd be able to kind of go more tanky or get like scales or something like that. And he gets like a base damage reduction or something like that. So it all can depend. I, I'm hoping we can see a lot of versatility. Probably have something like... He's probably going to have something like Sanguine Pool. Well, I don't think he evolves, because in the notes it says that he actively evolves. So he just probably switches between a bunch of different forms. He's Flubber. Maybe. It's Flubber! I wonder if his uh, shape changing is going to be active or reactive. Maybe something crazy, where it's like if you level up certain abilities first... He gets a passive where it's like, okay, if you get hit with a lot of damage, he changes into tank form. Kind of like a modified version of Syndra. Maybe. Except, like, it, it would be more influenced on what your opponents did. So, for instance, if you take a lot of AoE damage, you turn into, like, particles, <laughs> where you take less AoE damage and you do more AoE attacks. Or, like, if you take a lot of single target attacks, you change it to, like, a tank form, where you take a lot less damage and you don't do as much. Or if you get a lot of auto attacks off, you change into, like, spitting Hydra form or something. Or maybe which which skills you favor. Like, if you favor more of, like, an attack speed bonus or something like that, he becomes, um, he becomes like, faster. Or if, if you favor the, like, skill shots, he'll become... he'll His skill shot abilities will do more, and he kind of has, like, a, a slime slingshot arm or something like that. I would love to see him be a champion that does one of two things. Either A, his champion and his kit evolve around the items you purchase, or B... His champion and his kit evolve around what input is done to your character, like what you make him attack and what hits you. He's the ultimate counter. <laughs> that would be cool if that was the case. And you just like, okay, I need to have tower diving form. So you go take a couple of pot shots from a tower, and you slowly turn into this big like. I'm just not going to take damage from towers anymore, guys. I'm like, ah, uh, can we turn you into squishy form? <laughs> no, <laughs> you had your chance. Exactly. Gets hit by enough minions and he just turns into a minion. Lose control of him. Oh no. We've done it! <laughs> but yeah, guys, we don't know for certain yet. There's a lot of speculation. If you guys have any cool ideas, we'd love to hear them. Post them in the comment section below or just yell them to us across the street. We, uh, we'd love to see it. I don't know. I'm kind of distracted by the, uh, the, the shadows and the, like, the vials now. I'm kind of seeing if we can get anything interesting out of there. Wright hides things in the weirdest places. Like the banana. <laughs> exactly. All right. The next and final bit of information was a hot fix that was done earlier in this week. Um, Blade of the Ruin King got nerfed significantly due to the amount of people that were picking it up. Um, it was supposed to be a counter to war mogs and health stacking, and they felt like it was too powerful for it. So they've sort of knocked down um, what it does in terms of the amount it heals for and its cost, as well as some of the base attack damage. So... It's gone up in price, still a very effective item, but it's going to cost you a little bit more. This is the first time they've hotfixed an item in a long time, so this is kind of an interesting step by them. The gravity is moving more towards aura and team support items, such as uh, Runic Bulwark and Iron Solari. So who knows, they might 
tweak Blade of the Rune King around a little bit more, make it a good item. But uh, I've always liked Raid of the Blade of the Rune King ever since they introduced it. With Raid of the Blue King. Yes, Raid of the Blue King. Yeah, very good uh, in the uh, Tree Land Twisted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know I said that was the final bit of information, but there's one more thing that we usually don't mention. IPL got canceled. Uh, I know the big uh, world finales thing for the uh, Intel Masters is going on right now, but the IGN tournament got canceled because of all the stuff LOL Esports has been doing. They don't feel like they'll be able to draw enough of a crowd to make it a justifiable investment. Or so I think. They said that the, the, the climate for competitive play has changed, and so they're kind of pulling their hat out of it and throwing their support more behind just the LOL Esports, just general uh, effectiveness. So... Interesting development, really. I thought it would get more popular, but it looks like a lot of people aren't wanting to take the chances and trying to uh, bet against what has currently been a very successful venture by Riot. Yeah, I was very shocked to hear about this because I know IGN, when League of Legends first started up, they were the ones you'd go to for the, the high stakes playing for League of Legends. And so after seeing five tournaments go pretty well, it was shocked to see that they didn't even want to bother with it. Sucks for all the people that already bought tickets, room and board, and all that stuff. And they're trying to recompensate them right now, but uh, I imagine there will be some horror stories in the coming weeks. Well, I, I heard that, uh, I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard that Riot's trying to set something up during that same time, so people that can't cancel out of their agreements can, you know, go to a supplementary tournament well, or something like that. That's nice of them. Yeah, that, that, Riot doesn't need to do that. So that, that's, if, if that is true, that's pretty nice of them. Indeed. And final bit of information, Celestine Soraka got released, so if you've been itching for a new Soraka skin, it's finally coming out, and uh, you guys can play with it now, it's got great, great new spell effects, very interesting looking skin, great fun. A couple of other stuff on the PvE, uh, we don't really like to talk about this stuff because it's kind of preemptive, but a couple of new skins for your favorite champions, and if you want to look over the full details, check it out at surrenderat20.net. Otherwise, we're going to move on to our own section. Our first question this week comes from... Yamachi1111, he says, Question, cherry pie or apple pie? Isn't it obvious? Cherry pie. What? Not to mention the uh, the amount of innuendos you can make. Cherry pie is just delicious. It's sweet. It's filling. And you don't have to worry about, you know, sometimes you get bad apples in your apple pie. I've yeah, but a, you can get some rotten cherries, too. I've never had a bad cherry pie, but I have had a bad apple pie. I have had some pretty bad cherry pies. Yeah, and because you're I, crazy. I can never go wrong with a nice apple pie. Fresh baked, you know, a little bit of whipped cream on top. I think you're baked to think that uh, cherry pie is worse than apple pie. Well, you know what? You're not American if you don't love American pie with the apple our next question comes from Mester12, and he asks, If you guys could make a new item for League, what would be the name of the item, and what would it do? Well, for me, I would have the Magi Nunchucks. They would be, of course, Nunchucks, and it would give Magic Resist and Ability Power, kind of a tanky item that allowed mages to not only build up their Magic Resist, but also get a little bit more Ability Power, it would have an activated effect, which would kind of silence for one second. Just just one second. Just kind of like as a burst item, because a lot of characters that are very mage-heavy, use a lot of ability power, don't really have a silence of sorts, and kind of introducing a new silence would be kind of useful, especially since there's a lot of, you know, heavy hitters now that kind of silence would be useful, but it's more of a goofy item. I'm not here to balance. The uh, item I would make is uh, something I think would be kind of fun. Uh, I would it would be a combination item of the uh, spectral wraith collar and a hextech um, revolver. And basically, instead of firing two ghosts, you would fire one ghost that would torpedo towards someone and uh, slow them pretty hard and give you a tremendous amount of spell map. So it'd basically be a chase tool for a lot of mages that maybe don't want to get a rylize but still need to catch up to targets relatively quickly. So it'd be something for kind of like Karthus, Rise, Cassiopeia, um, mages that don't really have um, an effective CC or don't have good range, so be able to be like something that's like, BAM! Slowed you. Could it be called the Gosuka? Maybe. Because I want it to be something that kind of fills the role of Hextech Gunblade, but for mages that aren't hybrids. Yeah, because you only get Hextech Gunblade if you're looking for... 
Yeah, because it's just it's not stat efficient. But this the the color of the spectral wraith is great, but it's just not a very high tier item. So if there was a way to build that and make it a strong, solid item that allowed you to gap close and get up to targets and start doing your rotation, I think it'd be a great addition. And I would call it Mizuka. <laughs> Copyright. Access for the <laughs> did not take any ideas from anybody else in this room. Exactly. Our last question comes from our email. Mm. It's all dusty and full of buy now, free gold farming scams. Oh, I hate farming gold. And this is from Andre Jans Schmidt. The question is <laughs> now the quit is out. <laughs> what role do you want the next champion to fill? An AP, an AD, or maybe viable for both? Well, now that we have information on Zach and now that we've speculated, I think he's going to be perfect in terms of roles. But if I had to pick the one that I thought was an apex in terms of what I want them to be, I'll, honestly, I would like to see a mage. We I always a... like to see mages, so I know that's kind of silly for me to say. But, um, I don't know, we haven't had a good mage in a while. What was... And you can get creative with mages. A lot of like Mila characters, you only can What was the last some... mage we had? Syndra? Or was it Zyra? I think it was Zyra. But she's considered more of a support at this point. Uh, but yeah, she I think she was the last No, major. I believe it was Syndra, actually. One of the two, but I, I know that that was before November. Yeah, so it's been a long time, so I think AP would probably be best at this point. Because Thresh is more of a support than he is a caster, and he's more yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to go through the list here. Thresh is more of a support, and he's a better AD than he is an AP. But uh, yeah, and a, a full AP with maybe a new mechanic that we haven't seen before, something crazy, maybe having to do with uh, kite distance or something. Maybe, maybe a good artillery character. Not breaking the game. Syndra, cough, Syndra. Syndra's not breaking the game. She's just hard to use. Well, no. Remember, her mechanics were crashing the game. <laughs> no. That's your fault. I know. But anyway, very good question. And guys, we love, love, love questions every week. We usually try to answer at least two, sometimes more, like this week, for example. But if you have a question for us about the show, about League of Legends, about upcoming events, about anything, really, send it to our email. It's spasticgaming at gmail.com or post it in the comment section below. All that information is down below the video there. You can check it out send in your stuff. We still have... A fascinating and fun art contest going on. You can submit your entries. You can get riot points or other prizes as long as you're interested and your uh, entry is creative and wins. If you need information on that, we will also have a link to that in the information below. And we might even put something up on the screen for you. But check it out. Submit the entry on our forums, which uh, there should be a OK now. Yeah, there was, in the past couple of days, we had... Spam bots. My, minor apocalypse. <laughs> minor apocalypse. Checked the forums last night, and we had 700 posts in the journal discussions. This is pretty crazy. But uh, submit your entries, guys. Get cool prizes, and it'll be a great time. Otherwise, it's been Axis. And Water Elemental. And uh, how are we going to mispronounce Zach? That's hard. Because it's so simple. Zach. Zach. Why can't we just like say it all the way through? The Zion. The Zon. The Zan. And Memphis Camp Ant. Oh crap, the microphone's still on.